Developed, tested, and perfected by me, Kel Kellogg. Turbo Flashers. Turbocharge your trout trolling today by going over to Fish Hunt Shoot dot com and picking up a set of my turbo flashers you won't regret it they'll help you catch more and bigger fish they've done that for me and they'll do that for you hey guys Kel Kellogg here we're out at Folsom Lake today and we have been killing the salmon on our speed spoons but that bite has kind of slowed down now um, I want to continue power trolling so I'm gonna keep our most productive speed spoon down at about 60 feet that one's running off the port side but I'm gonna start experimenting with some bait I'm gonna run a turbo flasher teamed with a shad. I'm going to roll some shad and one of the misnomers about rolling shad or rolling bait is it's a really slow presentation. It works well slow but I'm going to roll shad here at about 2, 2.6, 2.7 miles an hour and uh, we'll see if we get hit but in the past at places like Shasta Don Pedro I've done very well on rig shad so let me show you how I rig one. Of course I've got my got my bait here. I got one of those fake ice packs there. It's warm out here you got to keep your bait fresh and I haven't brined this bait or anything. This is right from Willfish Tackle in Auburn, California. You can see there it's from the Big Red Worm Bait Company. So I'm just gonna rip this, uh, rip this bag open here and there's, looks like there's a Ziploc in here. We'll just pick out a nice firm shad. Another misnomer about rolling shad is that you need to use really tiny shad. Well, I don't really like to use tiny shad. I like to use large shad. I want to catch big fish, I want to fish a big bait. So we're going to rig this shad up. What I've got here, really pretty simple. These, these knots are a little challenging to tie. I've got a 10 pound piece of fluorocarbon leader. I've got it tipped with a number eight treble hook. And right here, I have about a number 10 octopus hook, a red one, but I've got that tied over the leader so it will slide. And that's very important because that's how I'm going to make the bait roll. So let me get that shad. Going to take that octopus hook and we're going to stick it right through the firm part of the shad's head. Not so easy when you're old and blind, but I will get it through there. So you kind of feel for the hardest part of the bone, you pop it through just like that. And you take that treble, take your treble, and I like to put it right here in the, in the gristly part of the tail, just like that. And then I start pulling that slack out of there. And you can see, I put just a little cup in that shad. Just a slight cup with some line tension. That shad is gonna roll, it's gonna look like it's in distress. And of course that turbo, that turbo is gonna put out a ton of, of high pitched vibration, a little bit of flash, and uh, hopefully we're gonna be yelling fish on. So let's get this down, we're gonna put this down at 60 feet and see what happens. Speed spoons. Troll them, cast them, or jig them. If you want to get aggressive with trout, get a set of Kel Kellogg speed spoons and get your fish on. Available at the fishhuntshoot.com website. Kel Kellogg here. This is kind of the final word on shad rolling. You know, you saw all that. You saw the shad rolling through the water. Um, but obviously, the key component of making shad or any bait fish roll properly is being able to tie that leader with that, uh, that upper hook that slides along the main leader. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. It is not the easiest thing in the world to do. And in fact, if you wanna go out and seriously troll shad or troll rigged anchovies, I suggest you tie these leaders at home. Now, just for our purposes, you know, when I'm out trout fishing or salmon fishing, I'm using usually, you know, 10 pound test leader material and uh, fairly small hooks. But for a demonstration, I need something you can see. So I'm gonna run with some 20 pound, just regular P-Line CXX. I think you can see that pretty well. And uh, I went in my saltwater stuff. I grabbed a, I don't know what that is. That's probably a seven or eight dot octopus hook and a, a good sized treble. I think this is an eight-aught treble. This is something I'd use for ling cod fish and something like that. Sometimes I go even bigger than that depending on what I'm fishing. So here's how you get started. First thing you need to do is you need to, to cut off a section of leader material. My shad leaders are typically anywhere from 30 to 40 inches long. Doesn't really matter. Um, so just, just break off a, a section of leader material. So I'm gonna, 
I know, you know, the span of my arms is about six feet, so I probably got 48 inches or so there. So I'm gonna just go ahead and cut this off. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach that uh, treble hook to the end of the leader. And that is super, super simple. That's all rough and bent right there. I'm gonna snip that off. So attaching that treble is super simple. You can use any number of knots, but uh, I just wanna keep things really simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a basic Palomar. I'm gonna take the leader right here. Here's the hook. I'm gonna put that, that line through the eye of the hook, pull some line out, and then pass it back through this way here like that so the line is the line is doubled over and uh, then I'm just gonna tie a granny knot in it like so and then see this loop here I formed with the double line I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop that hook through that loop and the bigger the loop is the easier it is but we'll get her through there and once you got the hook through the loop, you just start pulling everything down. You want to wet it, of course, before you pull it real tight. Pull that down, and you have a nice, secure Pelamar knot right there. And we'll trim that off. I like to leave a little tag end. It um, doesn't hurt anything. So I'm going to leave, you know, eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, something like that. So here we go got this treble hook attached to the end of the leader with a Palomar knot. Now, this is where 90% of the fish are gonna be hooked. Sometimes you'll hook one on that lead hook, but most of the fish are gonna be hooked on this treble. So I've got that attached with a nice secure knot. I'm very confident that that's, that's gonna hold. I know it's gonna hold. So there we go. Next thing we need to do is we need a short section of line. Not super short, I, I like to go 14, 16 inches, sometimes maybe a little less. More is better to a certain point. And this is the line that we're actually going to use to attach that octopus hook to our main leader so it slides up and down. A couple words of caution here. Um, you don't wanna vary the size of the line. If you're using a 10 pound test leader, you wanna use 10 pound test for this. If you're using, you know, fishing for a link eye, if you're using 50 pound test leader, you wanna use 50 on this too. If you use, you know, big differences in the size of the line, one line will cut the other and uh, that's not what we want. We don't wanna cut off a big fish. So just use the same line for the leader as, as you do for, for tying this knot. So let's get started. Put this in my mouth. I, I think I can still talk though. So here we go. So first thing we need to do so we need to take this hook and we need to take our, this is our main leader here. There's my treble. And uh, actually, let me set this down. I'm gonna take that main leader, I'm gonna put it through the eye of the octopus hook, and I'm just gonna slide this hook down the line to about kind of, you know, kind of where I want it, down towards the end here. Here's the treble. Here's the hook, and it's just, you know, it's setting on the line right now. So I just kind of control this over here. You gotta watch this hook. This is the one that's gonna end up in your finger if either one of them do, so be careful. So I've got that there. Now, I'm gonna take this short section of line right here that I just cut off, and uh, this, this is where things get tricky. This is not an easy knot to tie. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. I'm basically gonna tie a bumper egg sn uh, snell over the top of the other leader. So we're gonna take that line, we're gonna put it through the eye of that octopus hook, and I like to pull it about an inch past like that so I can kind of control the end of that, because you gotta control the end of that. Now here's what I'm gonna do. The first part's easy. This is the short section of line. I am just gonna start wrapping. One, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't matter how many wraps you do. You could do 10, you could do five, you could do nine. It doesn't matter. Um, so I got six or seven wraps there. Now this is where things get complicated. So I'm holding that line down, those wraps down with my finger right here, okay? Now I'm gonna take the other end of that short piece of line and I'm gonna stick it out through the eye on the octopus hook, just like this. 
just like that. I'm going to pull out maybe an inch or two, and then I'm going to take that line right there, and I'm going to get it to fall in line with the shank of the hook, but I'm still controlling everything with my finger. Now I'm going to start wrapping again with that same piece of line, but now it's more of a loop than a, a straight piece. So there's one important thing I have to do now when I make my wraps. Every time I wrap now, there's one, I have to pull the leader back out of it. There's two, there is three, and your wraps need to be nice and even. Four and five wraps. And then pull your leader back out of there. Now it's time to snug this down. Grab that little tag end and start drawing this down, drawing it down. And uh, it's going to want to curl and it's going to want to tangle up and it might try to grab the point on the hook. Just work with it until you feel it slip. It's slipping between my fingers now and that knot is starting to draw down. Now when it starts to draw down, you want to wet it. You want to grab that tag end on the back, back here. That's the tag end that we were holding in our hand. Just kind of hold both of those and just pull down on that. You can see that knot right there snug up. Then you want to snug it up here. Now. When you trim this, when you trim those ends off, first of all, make sure you don't cut the wrong one because you'll cut the leader off, and I do that fairly often. When you trim this, leave enough to grab. Remember, you're using fluorocarbon. The fish can't see it. They don't care about it. They're, they're focused on the bait fish. So I like to leave, you know, enough to grab. In this case, we're going to leave, say, three quarters of an inch up front right there. And on the back one, I like to trim it off kind of right here, right at the... Hopefully you can see that. I trim it off right here, right at the bend, right where the bend of the hook starts. Now, what we have is we have that octopus hook right there. It is attached by having that other line tied over the top of the main leader. And here's what we can do. There's the treble. There's that octopus hook. As you saw me in the demo, you put this through the bait fish's lips. You put this treble near the bait fish's tail and this slides up and down the leader now all of a sudden it's like 10 inches away let me step back here it's like that far away we could go like this we could slide it way down almost all the way down just like that and now we're really close to it it is the ability to slide that octopus uh, hook up and down the leader that causes the bait to cup you can cup it a lot for slow trolling and get a, a nice big roll you could cup it very little for faster trolling and you can get more of a drill bit type roll. Um, kind of, you know, just basic and you, you're gonna catch trout and you're gonna catch kings at the same time. But basic rule of thumb, I found that the kings like the bigger roll while rainbows, they like more of that drill bit style roll. Um, this is something you're gonna have to practice. I've tied thousands of these and it is still kind of challenging. But like I say, you know, you don't want to tie them out on the water during the heat of battle. If you're going to go out and you're going to roll shad, tie up, you know, half a dozen of these at home, stow them away, and then you are ready to go out on the water. You're ready to roll those shad. As I said, don't limit yourself on speed. You can roll shad all the way up to three miles an hour. As long as you got good quality shad, just go by how the shad looks. If the shad is staying on the hook and it's rolling, you can catch fish doing it. Um, one of my really secret techniques for big fish up at Lake Shasta over the years has been taking a shad, a good size shad, first thing in the morning and putting out three colors of lead core with the shad running behind it so it's 15 feet deep. Right where my lead core junctions to my braid on my hybrid rig, I hook on one of those inline planer boards. I put that rod up in a lock, rocket launcher if I'm fishing on a big boat, I'll scope it out to the side. I've got a shad rolling 15 feet deep right after dawn and I've caught some very nice kings on that and some very nice rainbows on that. And uh, again, don't be the guy that goes out and rolls tea tiny shad. They work sometimes. You want to catch big fish. If you're going to go through the hassle of rigging up bait, you want to catch something big. Run those, you know, two and a half, three inch long shad, and uh, I think you're going to be very happy with the results. A 10 inch rainbow will come up and just nail a shad like that, but it's big enough that it's going to attract, you know, the attention of bigger fish. Big browns, big rainbows, big kings, big spotted bass at times whatever, but uh, that is the most important 
part, most important component of rolling bait effectively is tying the leader and uh, right behind that in importance is having good quality bait, whether it's tray bait, anchovies, shad, whatever. Anyway, rolling shad is an upper level technique. It is a deadly technique for big fish. It's something that you need to have in your trolling arsenal. And uh, I know if you put all this information together, it's gonna help you out next time you're out on the water. And it is definitely gonna help you catch more and bigger fish. And in this case, definitely gonna help you catch bigger fish. Make sure it's legal at the lake you fish. Make sure it's legal to fish natural bait. It's not legal at all lakes. Um, up in the high Sierras, you can't even roll anchovies even though it's a saltwater bait fish. So. Be sure you're boned up on the regs, but uh, that is a pretty good overview on how to roll shad. It's rolling, use those trolling swivels, and don't be afraid to put a rudder in your line too, because you know, they're rolling. If they get the chance, they will twist your line into an utter and complete mess. Now, some folks like to run the Brad's baits and stuff. They rotate. There is nothing as good as natural bait when it comes to rolling. Just keep that in mind. Um, there's natural bait, there's gulp bait and there's everything else. So I always have the natural bait on my boat. Don't always use it. I don't always catch fish on it, but it's always there when I'm out looking for kings or big trout, stuff like that. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm out of here. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you're looking for rods, reels, more, my signature um, series trolling rods, go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and check out my store. And please take a second to hit that subscribe button and you'll always get a notification when I'm on here talking about fishing. Have a great day. I will catch you next time. Diamondbacks, Sidewinders, Fisheye Dodgers, and Fisheye Pros with the patented Moon Crackle Tape. FHS Dodgers flat out perform. Get yours now at fishhuntshoot.com.